latest on November 5th around the wide world of tropics. Here's your tropical weather bulletin. Two substantial cyclones are active in the Eastern Hemisphere today, day 308 worldwide. 84 storms have formed so far in 2019 and we could get another one extending from what was a uh, Matmo, also in the Indian Ocean. Day 158 of Atlantic hurricane season and it's quite dead, no systems active, nothing to talk about here. In the Eastern Pacific, day 175, nothing marked on the screen but there is a 10% chance for a disturbance down in the southeastern part of that uh, region there. And over in the Western Pacific, 90W also gets a mention because that could become a tropical storm pretty soon as well, a tropical depression designated by the GAMA. No systems active in the Southern Hemisphere at this time, it's all quiet here. Main feature remains Cyclone Maha, which has winds of 105 miles per hour, pressure 958 millibars, that's our latest estimate, 300 miles from Al Askawa in eastern Oman, 19.6 north. 63.5 east. It is closer to Oman than it is to India. We'll be stalling a little bit and then diving off towards the east and late this week it will probably strike the western coast of India. Maybe not as strong as what we initially thought now thanks to this storm's weakening in the last 12 hours but we still expect that some uh, storm impacts are possible and definitely high rainfall amounts quite possible along that western coast. Here is the storm's presentation in the last few hours. The eye was very clear earlier on today. It's fizzled out quite a lot during the evening and overnight hours local time and wind shear is starting to rise ahead of the storm too. I expect the dry air probably had a part to play in that as well. Here's another storm. That's Typhoon Halong in the western pacific the closest points of land are just on the far left hand side of the screen there the northern mariana islands the uh, wind shear values are very low as you can see down to five knots maybe even lower than that this storm intensifying rapidly already now a category four on our latest estimates with winds of 130 miles per hour and more strengthening could be on the way with its gigantic cloud tops the North Atlantic is looking like this today, fairly quiet generally, one or two little disturbances down there in the tropical zone, but really nothing that's going to um, uh, move out and develop into anything substantial. Um, we also look out towards the open Atlantic waters at this time for late season activity, doesn't look like there's anything there, and the Gulf of Mexico looking very quiet today. The Eastern Pacific then, uh, we see that disturbance there on the right hand side of the image, that is the 10% chance marked by the National Hurricane Center. So that is something to watch out for just because there's nothing else to look out for over in this part of the world. Uh, Eastern Pacific hurricane season winding down, um, quite a few seasons of the past have already had their last storm by now so it could happen that this year has already seen its last storm. Western Pacific though, uh, still looks like we're going to get some significant late season activity this is part of it, Typhoon Halong dominating the picture there. Quite high latitude as well, um, which will probably stop it from reaching the higher intensities, but it could still be knocking on the door of Category 5 status in the next 12 to 24 hours at worst case. The Australia and South Pacific region um, is getting a little bit more noisy, especially further west there. You can see that disturbance over the um, region, Papua New Guinea, off towards the Solomon Islands. Uh, the Indian Ocean, you can see the remnants of Matmo looking much better in the Bay of Bengal. Models are quite on board with this developing, redeveloping into a new tropical cyclone. Unclear whether it will retain that name or get a new one. And of course you've got Maha further west. Sea surface temperatures look like this. The uh, Eastern Pacific temperatures still very high, 28, 29 degrees Celsius where that invest is. The Atlantic, Caribbean still the hot spot, moving out over the Bahamas as well, still warm enough there for tropical cyclone activity, but out over the open Atlantic it's cooling down quite a bit by now. The Indian Ocean, Maha will be struggling with that upwelling which was initially caused by Kiar but also caused by itself now. Temperatures down to 26 degrees, possibly lower uh, near where it is right now. The Bay of Bengal very warm, 29, 30 degrees Celsius. Almost ripe for that potential tropical cyclone. South China Sea not quite so warm, 28 degrees. This is Cyclone Maha in the latest satellite imagery. You can see how it's been devolving in the last few hours. Gradual movement towards the 
north or north-northwest and we expect that that turn to the east will continue over the next um, 24 to 36 hours. We'll wait and see how much time it spends stalling. The more time it spends stalling, the weaker it will be by the time it reaches the coast of India. Bear that one in mind. This is a look at Typhoon Halong once again. So you can see how the eye has been emerging in those last few frames. Uh, enormous cloud tops, as I've been pointing out, um, which have been reaching minus 90 degrees Celsius, particularly in the, in the western side. The eye starting to come out a little bit more, and we'll probably see higher readouts from Sati over the next few hours as well, which is already reading into the 130s. Thankfully, unlike most late season storms in the West Pack, it is not a threat to land. So here we are right now on November the 5th, the next Atlantic storm name, should we get another one, will be Sebastian. In the Eastern Pacific, we're still looking out for Raymond. In the Central Pacific, the next name is Hone. Over in the Western Pacific, we'll be entering a new list shortly. The next name storm will be Nakri. And in the North Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Bulbul on list 8. You can find Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com with the latest, our YouTube page, search Force 13 all in text and subscribe if you haven't so far. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter, search Force 13 all in text. And you can contact us on any of those mediums with any questions. That's all for now. We'll be back with more in due course. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force 13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show force 13's colors wherever you go. You can also find a link to our discord server underneath this video in the description. 